name is Joanna Salinas and I am the Outreach Coordinator of the Waukesha County Green Team. For those of you who might be new to us, we are a volunteer-based 501c3 nonprofit organization focused on promoting environmental and economic sustainability in Waukesha County communities through education, collaboration, and local action. We do that by working with residents, businesses, schools, municipalities, and other organizations. We're excited to gather you all here this evening to hear from Heather Deaton, who's a wealth advisor at Ellen Becker Investment Group. We want to thank Heather for all the incredible information she has graciously and generously shared through our sustainable finance series. Tonight, we're going to wrap up that series with gifting and local giving. So we're going to ask everybody to stay muted and type your questions into the chat this evening. And then at the end of Heather's presentation, we'll have some time for question and answer. Well, welcome, Heather. It's a pleasure to have you here again tonight. Thank you, Joe. And I really have enjoyed doing this series, too. And so with that, I'm going to share my screen. Put it in presentation. So, um, to get started, I'm going to go through just what our agenda is, and then I'll do an introduction. Um, we'll talk through gifts that sustain, talk a little bit about the different logos and labels, um, also talk about some resources on where to find more information. And then again, like Joe said, we can talk through any of the questions that people have if you want to type them in the chat. I'll try to keep it a pretty decent pace. And Joe, um, anytime I'm going like too slow, which is probably more likely than me going too fast, then you just can uh, chime in and just speed me up then too. Will do. So to tell you a little bit about myself, so I've got a, kind of a collage here. Um, I am a wealth advisor with Ellen Becker Investment Group. I've been with our firm for about four years. We work with individuals and families and small businesses on comprehensive financial planning. So really, you know, listening, you know, helping people figure out what their goals are and more importantly, how they're going to get there. You know, meeting, I, I like to meet someone where they're at and find out where they want to be and help them get there and make all the different moves and, and shifts and tricks and turns along the way that it takes to, to stay on a path that we know is always going to change. A um, couple uh, images here are certifications that I hold. I am a certified financial planner. All of us at Ellen Becker for, who are advisors do hold their CFP. And that's a you know, rigorous set of coursework and a challenging board exam plus continuing education credits. And also this, um, earlier this year, I achieved my CSRIC, which is my Chartered, Chartered Social Responsible Impact Investing Counselor designation. And so I got to really dig in, learn a lot of the history of sustainable investing um, strategies on how to incorporate it into client portfolio, portfolios with them to achieve their goals and really align with their value system. Um, I've got a couple pictures here. There's a picture of my husband and I. Um, we've been married like 20 years. We celebrated that during COVID, which meant not a lot of anything that we did, but it was still a, a, a note to, to mark. Then we have two sons that are in high school as well. They're um, learning in, in a hybrid model now for anybody who's you know, wandering, wanting to know how different school districts are doing it. We are in like two days in and two days at home uh, and then one day like off. And then a couple of boards that I'm on and chair, uh, some organizations that are very important to me. Um, one is the Fondy Food Center and this is located in the city of Milwaukee. We run farm land projects for small farmers who maybe don't have land they can farm on their own or can't afford farmland to rent. So we run a farm project on the Mequon Nature Preserve that offers farmland at affordable prices. Um, and then we also run farmers markets and one of them being the Fondy Farmers Market, which is in the city of Milwaukee. It's been there a hundred years, uh, over a hundred years at the um, right by the corner of North Avenue and Fond du Lac Avenue, so in pretty much a food desert. And so we provide um, a market for shoppers and neighbors and anyone to go and get really great produce and locally produced goods um, and you know, made by small 
batch producers. And then again, a lot of our farmers from the farm sell their produce there. And it's just, it's a great, wonderful place. We also provide market match dollars for um, food assistance benefits like SNAP benefits and Quest cards. Um, the other uh, icon in the lower corner there, that is um, for the Lutheran Campus Ministry. That's another board that I'm on. And it's part of the ELCA Synod, um, the Greater Milwaukee Synod. And uh, we have a presence at the Marquette campus and at UWM's campus, uh, where we have a pastor that works with students to provide them a welcoming, you know, faith-based place to grow and lean in and be supported by peers in their faith and in their faith journey. So that's just where I spend some of my time. Um, the way I look at sustainable, right? So when we think of sustainable investing or sustainable gifting or sustainable health, it's making something last longer. And I really do think about it as like, whether it's your, the environment or our culture or our body, mind or spirit or our finances, you know, anything that we should really look at as a resource. Um, I do run a special interest group out of Ellen Becker. Um, we meet every month on the first Wednesday and we cover a different topic of sustainability. So this month it was um, sustainable vehicles and I had somebody from Renew Wisconsin present on electronic vehicles. Next month in December I'm going to do a, a gifting seminar as well and then we will take January off and then um, I'm planning next year a set of topics too. Oops. Okay so to dig in when we think about sustainable gifting, if you really think about what shopping has become, and I really think of it as one of my, um, one of my icons there really does say like, beware, you know, we need to think about what it is that we buy for people, especially with Christmas, when I think sometimes it can really feel um, like competitive, or that it needs to be bigger, better, more. And it really doesn't need to be like that. Um, and to be really mindful of where you spend your dollars. So if you think about Cyber Monday, which, or, or Black Friday, those may look different this year, but you know, in general, it is really about getting people to go out and spend and spend on things that they wouldn't normally spend on, spend on things they maybe no, don't normally think they would need. And in reality, probably don't really need. Um, if you think about some of the different fashion, like say Old Navy or Forever 21, they have that, it's more of a fast fashion, meaning that the trends change very quickly and it doesn't necessarily last. The quality isn't really there. So you may get something for, for low cost, but if it's not going to go through the wash more than seven times, it's really not going to be very like sustainable and then you'll have to be reshopping and refilling again. Um, you know, I have a stack of the, of the Amazon boxes there as a, as a picture. So really being able to think about the shipping involved. You know, I, I need to admit that I am an Amazon Prime user. Um, I do mindfully choose to use as few shipments as I can in order to limit the amount of driving of vehicles and of packaging and just the work it takes to fill those boxes. And if they're having to do it, five different times if my order has five items in it. Um, and then, you know, other things to consider too, like if you think about buying, say, electronics, that's something that is really popular, obviously, Black Friday sales. If it's low quality and it doesn't last as long as it could, or if it doesn't have a good warranty, um, that's just going to cause more waste. And electronics are incredibly hard to dispose of um, and can really cause some big problems through, even through like the recycling programs that we would have that take a lot of work to, to recycle. Now, one other way that I like to think about some of this shopping, you know, do I never shop at Old Navy? Do I never, you know, shop at Amazon? Do I avoid Black Friday? Well, well no but I do try to make informed decisions and I do try to be mindful. So I think if you can think of having, instead of hitting home runs all the time, think of having solid base hits, <laughs> right? Having that on-base percentage is gonna be, have, have better success long-term. 
Um, so uh, different ways to look at shopping. You know a lot of these different icons here too. So there is shop small. There's in, we talked about Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Well, on that Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend is Small Business Saturday. And you know any day is Small Business Day. And I really do look for the small producers and the handcrafted and artisan products that I can get from smaller shops or from truly my favorite places in the world are farmer's markets. Um, so to be able to look for that, keep the those uh, resources that you spend, the money that you spend, keep it local and have it circulating in our local economy means a lot to so many people through the whole supply chain as well. Um, if you can find things that either have been upcycled or if you can reuse or recycle things. You know, sometimes you have say an, an elephant gift exchange where it's something out of your house that you no longer want. You know, that can be kind of fun. It limits spending. It's not causing more new junk to, to be invented and brought into people's homes. It's more passing around stuff. Um, but even thinking of that, even like thinking, Maybe, maybe you can shop at places like Restore, which is the Habitat for Humanity um, home improvement and home goods type store. I got a dining room table there recently. Um, I've gotten you know, a, a very uh, pretty vase that I gifted to somebody. So just really thinking about that and even going to say Goodwill or their, um, their higher end store in the third ward is called Reteak. And that's got a little bit higher... Um, uh, criteria for, for what they sell there. And that's a great, a great store. Even a gift card to a Goodwill store, in my opinion, would be a great, a great gift. Um, you can also think about products where it's like a, a doing good for others when you shop there. So I love Tom's shoes. I, I love the shoes. Facebook knows I love the shoes. I'm always getting pop-up ads for the shoe, for Tom's. Um, but every time you buy a pair of shoes, they give a pair of shoes away as well. Now it's not the pair that you buy, but it is a pair that they'll give to a needy um, area. Usually it's international. And then um, Bamba's socks, they are another buy one, give one. So if you buy socks from Bamba's, they give Bamba's socks to um, a charity that needs, that can distribute socks. We do client gifts. Um, for some, for some of our clients and we give the Bombas socks. And it's really, we get a lot of great feedback on that really was special because the socks are great, they're comfortable, they're high quality. And then to know that somebody else got a pair of socks out of it too. Um, other things to think about. So the um, Environmental Working Group, you may have heard of them, the EWG. They're the authors of the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen and a tremendous amount of other information about cosmetics and home cleaning products. And their website is, is filled with information, but they've got a um, good gifts box that you can order and it's gonna have sustainable products in it. Um, and so that's just something to look at and that might interest you. Um, the other thing about gifting too, to bring up, I think makes sense here is that when we think about the actual act of giving, like Mary Ellen, you said you're going to go drop off presents. You know, uh, it's tomorrow, I think you said to go um, drop off birthday presents. You know, when you think about, you put it in a bag or you wrap it um, prettily, even thinking about what that is. Now, I, so my family knows, at least my kids and husband, they know that I save tissue paper and I reuse tissue paper. So if, if we get gifts at our house that have a gift bag with tissue paper in it, the tissue paper gets flattened, folded and put in the um, tissue paper reuse bag, uh, bag. And then the same with the gift bag. Um, I've not bought a gift. I don't even know if I have ever purchased a gift bag to um, gift to someone. There are so many gift bags floating around in this world right now. I don't even know if another one ever needs to get made if we can take care of them and re-gift them. I do want to um, advocate for a fun idea. If you had a group of maybe your family is in, would be interested in something like this. I say we should start wearing it like a badge of honor and actually marking with a Sharpie on the bottom of the bag, how many times it's been reused. I think that would be really a, a fun thing if you had people interested in that. Um, at my house here too, when my family gives me any gifts, they know to wrap it in 
something that is either like a reused thing, whether it's newspaper that would normally be recycled or a pillowcase out of the linen closet. Um, I also think of that when I buy gifts for people too. I do actually gift, um, I have somebody who makes handmade pillowcases and I like to gift those each year. I always think that's kind of fun. So if I give another gift, I wrap it inside that pillowcase or a pretty um, di a dish towel or you know, cloth, a set of cloth napkins if you can find something, a fun way to use those. So just kind of thinking about it that way too. Let me see, how do I move? Then there's philanthropic gifts. So some things to think about. Now, I have, um, it's on the floor next to you, I'm not gonna reach down and get it. Um, so we do through the ELCA, they've got a catalog of good gifts it's very similar to Heifer International where you can donate like a cow is how Heifer International started. They've also grown and they have many other offerings, but you could donate say a, um, a, a chicken or a set of chicks to a small farmer somewhere. So maybe it's a $25 donation and somebody's going to get a set of baby chicks so they can start um, a poultry produce or a production unit, if you will, by having eggs that they can uh, use to consume and also to sell as they can grow. Um, also, other things are water projects that the Heifer International and also the ELCA support. There is, you know, being able to fill a backpack and gift a backpack just by simply donating money. You can also fill things like backpacks and donate those throughout the year um, to different organizations that are collecting that. The um, I believe it's the Winter Clearing Council, Waukesha Clearing Council has a um, sock and mitten drive, a, a, a sock, I think, and glove and mitten drive in the winter. So you could all always donate in honor of your, of who you want to give a gift to if they really don't need anything, which many people don't. Many of us have, have what we need, have, have resources, are blessed enough to be able to get what we need or even if somebody is just plain hard to shop for, you know, giving a gift to somebody else in their name and in their honor can really be meaningful. Um, Kiva is a micro lending organization. So what that means is you put in say $25 is I think the minimum, or maybe you do a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, then you can choose people that have signed up to get a micro loan. So maybe an entrepreneur say, somewhere in say Tanzania, they want to improve their um, convenience shop. And so they're looking for a loan of say $3,000. It's gonna be hard for them to find one person to lend them $3,000. But if they could get many people to loan them $50, they could actually get to, 5, 000, to the $3,000. Then they would pay you back over time. It goes back into your Kiva account, which then you can relend again. So we do this as a family and we have also gifted this before too. We've gifted Kiva funds to, um, to my sister-in-law who then she got to decide who that got lent to. And then they continued to build as well by adding more and then also relending the interest that the, that the lendee paid back. Um, Giving Tuesday is something that I'm sure you're familiar with, but it's the Tuesday after the holiday shopping weekend so it goes Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Sunday they let you just take a break. Then Monday it's Cyber Monday, and then it's Giving Tuesday. So that's just where many organizations have that push of, hey, don't forget about us when you're looking to give this holiday season. So you'll see, you'll get a lot of emails that day. There may be matching donations um, provided for that organization that day. So it's just something to pay a little bit closer attention to. We do that as a family every year. My husband and my kids and I, we sit at the computer and we each decide, we each get a dollar amount to give to an organization and we each decide on our own who we wanna to give to that day. And it's been interesting to see over the years how our interests have changed. Um, and for my kids, that's even, even more important to, for us to be able to see how their interests have changed. So if you can involve your families that in, in what learning what is important to them, the relationship just only deepens and, 
and it really can be fulfilling. Um, our founder, Karen Ellenbecker, she started doing this with her grandkids. They, have, they get to choose where they want a donation made in their name. So she asks them to actually do a presentation. So they have to research the organization, explain why it's important to them, do a little research as to how the funds, um, if they donate those, how they'll be used. And, it, and through this, she's gotten to really build her relationship with her grandkids, find out more about what they're interested in, and also give those, the, the kids something to look forward to and look inside themselves for. So a story, one of her granddaughters um, was liked animals. So she wanted to contribute to Haws, which is the like Humane Society in Waukesha. And so she gave the presentation, learned about the organization, obviously was more interested in it. They gave that donation. From that donation, they got invited to a behind the scenes tour. So Karen and her granddaughter went on the behind the scenes tour. So Savvy got to, you know, talk to the people that work there and she got to ask questions. She got to see behind the scenes what it was, what it's like at that organization. Then she asked if she could volunteer. Now she's been volunteering there, you know, every week for, I'm, I'm not sure how long, if it's been this whole year or if it's even been a couple of years, but she's really grown and developed. She's been able to, you know, kind of hold this part of her life and contribute and give back in a different way that as a child, she maybe wouldn't have even done had it not been for, you know, what Karen really worked with her family on. So sorry, I'm going kind of long on that, but I really feel that involving your family in philanthropic uh, giving is, is really a way to enrich those relationships. Um, another way to look at sustainable gifting, again, so things don't just go to waste. Um, and I am big on the relationship thing. So you'll see some things here about experiences. Now, I know things are different. So my icon there for sporting events, you know, that's not what 2020 is about, probably not even most of 2021. But in theory, thinking like, you know, whether it's play tickets um, or if it is, and going as a family to experience it together, um, a day at the zoo or a day at the art museum or even gifting memberships to those types of places, whether it's the public museum or the children's museum, which is actually coming together, um, the art museum and the Milwaukee County Zoo, if you can do gift memberships and then you could know that your family is going to go and experience that um, on their own throughout the year can be really impactful as well. Um, some different services, like maybe it's somebody who just really needs some help with say snow shoveling or Mary Maids. You, know, you can give gift cards to a cleaning um, service, if that's going to be something that's helpful to your family. Um, even like subscriptions like Netflix, um, I put that on there too, you know, or if you wanted to gift them a newspaper subscription, you could do the online subscription very easily and know that they would get something out of it. Um, I have a, a piece in here, the community supported agriculture. So if you're familiar or if you're not, that is where you, far, certain farmers will sell a share of their farm. And as a shareholder, you get a box of produce throughout their growing season. Whatever it is that's in their fields, you get a part of that. And you, if you think about gifting that, that would be a great way to help give somebody the experience of a box of farm fresh produce or maybe eggs, or some of them offer a meat subscription they would get that every week or every other week throughout the entire growing season. That, could, that would be so incredible to give to somebody. Um, I had a CSA subscription for a couple of years and it was really, really interesting. I got produce I had never seen before, had no idea what it was. That was um, celeriac root uh, that, I had, that they gave me a recipe on how to um, prepare it. Um, I got reintroduced to things that I thought I didn't like and now I can't get enough of. Um, okay, for me, that's beets and kohlrabi. I didn't even know what kohlrabi was either, but uh, beets I didn't think I liked or hadn't liked in a long time. So it would be a really neat thing to, to look into. There's an open house, usually in the spring at the Urban Ecology Center that have the different farms that offer CSAs. You can go and meet the farmers 
And then also look for Farm Fresh Atlas. That gets produced in the spring as well. And that's a great online resource. And also it's, it's in a printed form where it'll tell you all the different farms, um, all the different farmers markets, all the different CSAs, that community supported agriculture, all in, um, in just one place all around the state. Um, the Milwaukee Film is another organization I have their icon on here that if you gave that a membership to that, they do a monthly screening for members, a free screening of a movie, even throughout COVID, we've been doing them online. So that's just a great organization. You know, any of those subscriptions you gave to charitable organizations like that, um, you're helping those organizations stay afloat and being able to provide their quality content as well. Um, I do have a, another story to think about a gift list Christmas. It goes along with this because it's that experience base. One of my friends, um, her kids are in their 20s and they're both married. And she said, you know, we're kind of done with this whole stuff, giving stuff. She's like, what I want is time. <laughs> so she wants time with her kids. So she's going to give, give them time, right? So what they've been doing the last few years is they plan um, to just, they get together for Christmas, but it's not about the gifts. But then they plan a weekend for all six of them to go away somewhere. So like they spent a weekend in Memphis together and they paid for the lodging and most of the meals and each of the adult family, uh, each of the adult children family units, they also uh, picked up the tab for a meal and they just got to spend the time together. And I think that that is something, again, I'm thinking about the relationships as what we really wanna devote to our giving. Okay, now financial gifts. So. One of the one one thing that I meant to mention on the charitable giving slide is that for the year 2020, there is an above the line tax deduction of $300 for every tax return. So every taxpayer, if you donate to a charity through up, up to $300, certainly you can donate as much as you want, but you can get a tax deduction up to the $300 donation and that is whether you itemize or you take the standard deduction. So it comes right off your taxable income above the line. So certainly keep your receipts if you donate this year. Um, other things from a gift idea, you can give to somebody, uh, if you've got kids that are not, that are in college or not yet in college, you can give to kids or grandkids, you can give to their Edvest account. And that way, um, that's going to be funds that you put into the 529 plan. Wisconsin's version is Edvest. And then that'll grow. And if it's spent on education, it grows, it grows tax-free. You never pay taxes on that growth. The contribution going into the account, if it's an Edvest account, which is, again, the Wisconsin 529 plan, you can get a, tax, a state tax deduction up to $3,280 per Advest account that you contribute to. So something to think about. Um, also, if you wanted to give somebody a gift for their future, you could certainly open or give them funds in an investment account that would grow and, and they would be able to use it how they want to later. You could certainly give them cash and they could invest it how they want to. Or you could give them funds that either you make sure go into a, a Roth IRA or you could contribute to the Roth IRA directly. There's Roth limits. Um, so you'd wanna work with that person to make sure that they're not already exceeding the contribution limit. They also have to have enough taxable, um, they have to have enough uh, uh, adjusted gross income to cover that as well. So like say, if you've got say maybe it's a college student or even a high school student or somebody just out of college and you say, you know what, I wanna help you for your retirement down the road. So if you gave, if you contributed to the Roth IRA, say maybe you even use it as an incentive and say, I'm going to contribute $50 a month if you contribute $50 a month. It's a way to incentivize them to save, but then you're still giving on their behalf as, you know, in honor of them for their future, where it would then grow tax-free until they spend it in retirement. And it is, by the way, the best money in retirement is the Roth IRA dollars right now. Um, there are gifting limits. If you are going to gift to somebody, um, there's a limit of $15,000 per person. Um, you can give more than that. You just need to file a gift, um, a gift tax return 
It does, you don't pay taxes on the gift. It just chips away at your, and at your lifetime um, giving maximum, which right now is like $11 million, but it used to be like five and before that it was like three. So it's, it can change. And it's just something to know. You certainly can gift more than 15,000. You just have to tell the IRS you did it. Um, yeah, that's about what I've got on that. You know, for the, for the 529, you can do like as a grandparent um, or as a parent, you can do like a catch up. So you can do a whole bunch of years at once if you've never gifted um, to them before. So if you've got specific questions about that, you could reach out to a financial advisor or you could reach out to me. Um, then this is like the local giving. Um, if you, this is some different places that you wanna think about. So if you wanna really keep things local, you can look for different merchants on the Local First Milwaukee website. They also have a podcast, which I just listened to an episode today that featured um, a local producer of a, um, a turmeric uh, beverage called Zin, Z-Y-N. So that was a great episode to listen to. Um, you'll see those bottles in your grocery store. But anyway, if you look at there for Local First, it's gonna give you different um, local producers. Also the sticker that you see on a lot of products that something special from Wisconsin. That's just, again, a visual way to know what you're buying. So a lot of different products will have that. If you go to farmer's markets, Fondy Food Center, my organization, we run the Milwaukee Winter Farmer's Market that just opened last weekend at the Domes in the Domes Annex. So it's every Saturday, um, 8.30 to 12.30. It's working a little different this year where we have capacity limits and we had to limit the number of vendors. So there's an every other week. Um, the Another market that uh, I think opened this past weekend or is opening soon is the Oconomowoc Winter Farmers Market. So you can look either of those up online. I, I think they both, I know that uh, the Winter Farmers Market from Milwaukee has a Facebook page. Um, two other pieces I have on here on this slide. The Sherman Phoenix, now that's on Fond du Lac Avenue in the city and that's a, um, it's a collective, it's got all um, local producers and it's mostly minority owned businesses. And that's a great place. They've got some different food areas there. They've got some um, different uh, confectionery producers. And also they have services there, like there's yoga and there's nails and hair. And then there's also um, a couple of shops that do like, um, personal care products and teas and soap and things like that. So I would look, check out the Sherman Phoenix and then also MKE Black. That's that other icon there. That's an app. It's a website and it's an app. You can get it on your phone and, and you can look on their website and they've got all black owned and minority owned businesses in the Milwaukee area. They've got, I think um, they're looking at, they have Racine and Kenosha and I believe they're starting to um, collect that data for Waukesha businesses too. Um, a couple other ones that aren't on here that um, to just keep in mind, the Glass Pantry is a all bulk store. It's got grocery type items and it's got um, uh, like cleaning products and personal care products and it's all bulk and they offer curbside pickup they do local delivery and they and their shop is actually in um, Walker's Point. So I would look up the Glass Pantry Milwaukee. And then Plowshares is a fair trade store in Waukesha as well, right, Therese? <laughs> and so that would be a place that you'd wanna um, look at. Again, many of our local producers are doing um, curbside pickup or offering delivery. And of course, you know, if they've got store hours, just making sure that it's safely um, run and if you can feel safe there too. Let's see. Now the next is product certifications. So this is just a few on this slide. There's over 3,500 certifications. Um, I know that um, there's many different things. There's a certification for almost everything, but a few that I like to look at is for one, the fair trade to just making sure that whatever you're getting, if, and that's like what Plowshares uh, focuses on is fair trade products, 
just meaning that the producers from around the world actually are fairly compensated and that they have fair employment practices um, in in those in their production and sales and that they're getting actually what they deserve. Uh, one percent for the planet. Now that's if a company chooses to donate um, one percent of their profits and their or their revenue to doing good for the planet. Certified B Corp, that's another favorite of mine. I mentioned that Zinn Beverage, they were just on the Local First um, podcast that I listened to today. They are a certified B Corporation. There's about 13 um, of the 3,000 or more certified B Corps in the world. 13 of them are in Wisconsin. And I believe that, um, that, that my number is outdated. I think it might even be 15. I know there was a couple more that were, that were looking into that. That's really where it looks for product excuse me, profit, people, planet. So it's doing good with the money that they earn, making sure that they take care of people and treat them well, and that they watch out for the planet. So again, that's a, that's a pretty rigorous um, certification to go through. One that leads to that in a way is the Green Masters Program. So that's um, run by the Wisconsin Sustainable Business Council. And that is where, again, they've got um, all the different businesses have a different set or they'd have a set of standards to meet in order to get to achieve that certification. And then that last one is um, Leaping Bunny. That just shows that there's a, a many different like logos and icons to be able to look for. And so one way to look those up, and I don't know if it's on my next slide, I got to look at my page. Yeah, I'm going to go to the next one. So if you wanted to know more about a few different things, I'm kind of getting into the resources here that, um, for all those different certifications, the 3,000, more than 3,500 certifications that there are for products, you could look many of those up on ecolabelindex.com. So that's a great source of information there. And then Good Guide is another source of information. That's a team of scientists that analyze product ingredients um, and regulations for more than like 75,000 personal care, um, cosmetic and household products. And you know, when you think about gifting, you know, lotion baskets, or you think about gifting cosmetics, or you know, maybe it's um, it's a pamper yourself type of basket you want to put together for somebody that you want to give a gift to. It'd be great to understand what it is you're actually buying and what they're actually putting on their body and what, what that's doing to the environment and um, you know what it what it's doing to the uh, supply chain and even the um, employment practices and safety for the workers. Um, and then that ewg.org, that's that environmental working group, which you know my favorite thing that they do is the clean 15 and the dirty dozen, um, but that's just kind of my thing. But there's a lot of other guides they have out there. Um, two other things I listed here is Charity Navigator. You can find a lot of information about charities on Charity Navigator. You know, uh, if you have a charity that you're interested in, that's a place to start. You could also go to that, that charity's website. They should have their annual report listed. You can find their form 990, I believe is on Charity Navigator. That's an IRS form that's required. And uh, most uh, organizations do have to go through um, a regular audit. So you can find their audit results on um, that form 992. And then volunteer match, something I didn't talk a lot about, uh, kind of in the experiences and how you want to spend time with your family. And I talked about what we do as far as we, we as a family, we lend to Kiva. We as a family, you know, do our Giving Tuesday. We as a family also volunteer together. We support um, my organizations of the Fondi Food Center. So my family always um, helps me at the market and they help out at our annual gala event. Um, they also have helped out with my Lutheran campus ministry event, but even throughout like say the Christmas season, we do volunteer as a family. In the past, we've rang bells for um, Salvation Army. We have also gone with our church to sing Christmas, Christmas carols at, um, at a retirement community. And we are not good singers, but to be able to go and sing along with the uh, residents at the retirement community was really a lot of fun. So that would be something to think about. Um, again, that kind of gifting time and gifting the experience and bringing your family along, along for it. 
And then that was, that's the end of my prepared presentation. I do have my contact information out here. If you want to um, jot that down, I know Joe will probably provide that. If you've got questions that we don't get to tonight, you can contact me directly anytime. Well, this was super fantastic. Thank you so much, Heather. So sure. this is the first presentation where we have zero questions in the chat. So I'm just going to open it up and just say, um, does anyone who's on the call right now have any questions for Heather? I did such a fabulous job. You did. <laughs> you really I'm covered kidding. everything. Yeah, I'm kidding. Um, I guess just one question. Can we run over the thing about gifting again? Um, specifically gifting cash, that there's a limit to how much you can do per year before you have to report it. How exactly does that work? Um, well, so it's it's an honor system, right? So mm -hmm. it's it's the the annual this year's annual um, gift exclusion, meaning you don't have to report it. Is fifteen thousand dollars a year okay okay so let's say somebody wanted to help let's say let's say um i let's say you let's say your parents right mm -hmm. or a parent a, a, an older parent with adult children wanted to help their help the their child with a say a down payment on a house right and they had funds to give and they're like well we really want to help them they want this house. We don't want them to pay PMI. We're going to give them 50 grand. Well, they'd have to just make sure that this all works out. So a, 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 a person can give another person $50,000 or I'm sorry, $15,000 without having to report it. So mom and dad could give daughter and son-in-law each $15,000 and they could end up giving them $60,000 without having to report it. So there's, you know what I'm saying? So like, even if you want to give if you, it, so you just kind of have to plan it out and mm -hmm. think if you want to help somebody do something, right? If you, you know, so that's, that's that gift, that annual gift exclusion. If, if you, if you were like, I want to give my sister $20,000, you know, and it's, it's a one-to-one, -one, right? You're over the annual gift exclusion. So a couple things you could do. You could say, well, give her 15 now and give her 5,000 and on January 1st, it's the next year, right? If you're like, nope, she needs 20 right now. You know, this, this is the gift you wanna give. Then you, then you do the, the required reporting and you've, you've started your tally against your $11 million lifetime gift exclusion. You, you, you've chipped away at 5,000 of it. The better thing to do is to try to just work with the dates on the calendar you know what i mean or mm -hmm. figure it out i shouldn't say better i don't mean better but it's like that's probably the easier thing to do is just kind of figure it out that way just that to avoid paperwork basically right what's that just to avoid paperwork basically yeah. right 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 i mean it's the easier thing to do is to not have to start that tally but mm -hmm. um but certainly you know i wouldn't i wouldn't let that necessarily get in the way of a, of, a, of a needed gift. But again, knowing that you can kind of plan it out. I think if you, if you um, pay somebody's tuition directly to the college, it does not count as that gift. And if you pay somebody's medical bill directly to the medical provider, it does not count against that annual exclusion either. So if, if it was like, you wanted to help somebody because they had medical bills, you know, and you and it was going to be over fifteen thousand dollars. You could pay the medical provider directly, or say a college kid you wanted to pay his tuition, pay the college directly, and it doesn't count towards that annual exclusion. Well, this was a really wonderful presentation, excellent information. I'm going to plug that you're also going to be on our Greencast podcast um, talking about the same thing uh, coming up in just a couple days that'll be released on November 15. Yeah. And so that's a super easy format for people to share. So if you're seeing this presentation and you want to share it with lots of people, 
that's a great way to do it is through that podcast. So, all right. Well, that's if we great. don't have any other questions, then I think we'll probably wrap up and just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Oh, thank you guys. It was really um, great. I enjoyed doing these, this series. So,